Hey everyone, this is my wife's Galaxy 2 active watch, which failed today on February 6th, 2022. We have purchased it and she started using it around October 25th, 2019. We can see that this is rated IP68 by Samsung. And they've since added upon an asterisk to their definition of IP68 since we purchased this watch. Not advised for beach or pool use. Kind of funny when the website has instructions, including pictures with people using them in swimming pools. On the other hand, for second generation and newer, Apple explicitly states that their watches can be used in shallow water for swimming pools and beaches. So we're going to take this watch apart, find out if it's water damage at all, and if it is, to what extent, and if we could repair it. Let's get started. We're going to kick things off by removing these wristbands. Small driver is used to remove these four screws that hold the entire watch together. The screws themselves show signs of rust on the threads. I used a plastic blade to start the opening and the rest I'm working with my fingernail. You're seeing this for the first time as I am on camera. And it's not looking good from the inside. But I proceed. I'm going all the way around the watch. And yeah, wow, that's bad. We can see that's definitely been leaking into the watch for a long time. We see actually a drop of water still on there, right at the center on that black square. I spent a few minutes with compressed air just to try and dry out this unit from any of the water that's still in there before I proceeded. We're going to see how well deoxic comes through for us today. I can't just disconnect these connectors. They could crack apart from the rust. So I'm using some capillary action with the deoxic to wet them. And I'm wetting this area too. And then I could try separating them without them cracking. It sat for a bit, and now with the screwdriver, just pop it right off. No damage done. We've separated this part, which I now spray with deoxid, and I could put this off to the side to soak. More work on the main board. I gotta hit each connector. Again, capillary action to make sure that the connectors under there get wet. This is a big connector right here up top. And then I'll just hit this top connector once more and then go over everything right quick i've let it sit for a while I'm gonna try and pop these connectors off here's the first one and it came off without incident more deoxid is then applied under the connector now that it's removed this header looks really bad i'm gonna clean this up and surprisingly it cleans up pretty good and i'm using this paper towel so we can see all the accumulation is coming off this board pretty bad but at least it's cleaning up so i'm going all over here just trying to clean up everything as best I can. Attempt to pop off the next connector. Came off without incident. Then apply some deoxid under the connector on both sides. Now on to the largest of the connectors. Came off again without incident. Again, deoxid applied. Things are starting to look better. Come back to the rear of the unit. Clean up these connectors here. And they clean right up. Also, I was able to remove a lot of the rust that was sitting here embedded into the plastic came out too. So this came out rather nice. Small Phillips holds this main board in place. The board is then gently negotiated out from those cables that overlap it. Those were since disconnected. The battery looks a bit bloated. I'm going to dry out the section with canned air. That could be a combination of water that's back here as well as a lot of that deoxid that I've already sprayed, but I think the battery was exposed to water. The back of this board is not looking wonderful. I'm going to hit it with deoxid. We're going to do a spray and soak again. Hopefully we didn't incur any permanent damage. I gently attempt to remove any rust and debris with the paper towel. Let it soak for a second round with the deoxid. This is like a microphone or, or speaker of some sort. It has an O-ring in here. This may or may not be how the water got in. I don't know. I'm going to spray this area. This is now the lower area where the battery terminals are. There's some sort of sensor here. I'm going to clean too. This is the battery terminals right here. I'm cleaning. Blow it out one more time. And there's our lower portion. The battery has a voltage on it. It's definitely not 3.8 and it is dropping as I check it on the meter. I don't have high hopes for this battery. I'm going to order one now because I know I'm going to need it. After cleaning the main board, the lower side, I realized that the positive terminal for the battery had completely dissolved off. And I'm just touching this with a hair of flux. I'm doing this under like two microscopes. 
and just just a touch of solder, like less than a millimeter bead on this. This is just temporary for testing. And you can see the profile, it is lower than the negative of this new bead, but it is higher than the negative when the negative is at full seat. So that's what I was going for for now. This is called plug and pray. Having found a single point of failure and it's cleaned up, I'm going to assemble everything together. But deep down, I know that battery is shady. Board's in position. I'll drop that Phillips screw back in. Snap in these three connectors. Now plug in the connector that connects the rear of the case and the charger. I'll snap everything back together. There we go. Drop it on the charger. We'll see what happens. So I'm definitely seeing some fluctuations here on the kilowatt. Definitely some connectivity now. However, we can see that this battery is expanding and pushing the screen out the front. I gotta get this off the charger. We gotta get rid of this battery. Here's a $10 gamble, a special I ordered from Pyongyang. Let's hope this battery actually works. Just pop out this old one and get rid of it before it explodes. I soldered two small leads to the end of the new wire so I could do some testing. They were in turn soldered to the board. If this works, my plan is to use a much smaller gauge coil cable, but for right now, we'll see what we got going on. I'm not going to reconnect all the connections yet, just the one that allowed me to get a visual indication from the screen. I still have to carefully negotiate the charger into all this, so that's connected too. And the charger needs to be butted up against the board because there are two connections on the spring-loaded connectors that need to touch. So basically, I'm going to hold everything like this and see what we got. And I'm trying to adjust the camera for the shot. I don't even realize that the thing's turning on. And there's actually a lightning bolt there. So I was surprised when I was finally able to look down and see this was actually working. Yeah. I will admit that given all the damage we made it this far, I was surprised. Still a long road ahead. But take the win. We're going to let this thing charge. But I'm not going to sit here and hold it. So I'm going to have to tape something together. I did hold it long enough to see it go to 1% to show that it was actually incrementing and taking a charge. Some sophisticated engineering now, a small bowl of paper towel with some scotch tape. And I am now <laughs> putting that around the board and then taping it around the charger to hold that board against the charger to let this thing charge so I could walk away. And we could see that it is now staying on without me holding it. Outstanding. Come back a while later, have a look. 45%. Consumption during charge is about 1.3 watts. Eventually, it did hit 100%, stopped charging, so it's operating correctly. I'm going to attempt to pull my special scotch tape harness off of here to remove it from the mount. I tried both buttons because I don't know how to operate it, and lo and behold, it did in fact start to boot. It says rebooting on it, so it flashed it a couple times. I did not have all the connections in, in the back I had realized. I can't connect those connectors until I could seat this board. I'm going to need to find some really fine varnish coil cable to address this issue. Picked up some 30 AWG enameled copper cable. The watch has been sitting on the charger for a few days. I've held it in with one screw to hold everything together so it could charge. I'll take that screw out now. Start disassembling everything for this final repair. The current connection has been rigid, but not very delicate. I didn't have to worry about anything shorting out. But at this point, once I disconnect this battery and cable, which I do first from the battery, minimize the chance of any shorts, we'll get these wires out of here. We're going to start getting into some delicate work. No room for mistakes. This wire is hair thin, and I have to scrape away the enamel off of the first millimeter or so from all directions of this, so I'm rotating it as I scrape so that the insulative material is gone. Straighten everything out, and I did apply a thin layer of flux to both sides here. It's hard to show on video because I am using two sets of magnification to do this. We can see one going over, but I had to move it to the side. As I solder these connections, these are four times the thickness of a human hair. Unfortunately, I didn't get the footage of some of the silver paint work that I did, some of the tracks that were corroded away. Now it's applied with a razor blade, but here are the two wires now connected to the board and now connected to the battery. Have some tacky all-purpose glue and I'm going to use that right at 
the very base of the connections. I'm just putting a little bit on my finger so I could transfer it. And this is so these don't get pushed together through some means. Provide a little bit of rigidity right here at the base as it dries. And I'm doing that at both ends. And that's all that's really for. I've tested this glue as wet to make sure that the resistance between the glue is not too low to cause a short on the battery. And I'm going to test that connection now. We're showing 4.26 volts. Everything's looking real nice. This is the hard part now as the battery's got to be reinstalled and I want to get that edge where it originally seats in in its original and proper location. But now I need to negotiate this board in on top and to curl the wires around in such a way that they don't crimp and there's very little room to work and I'm only able to really use my fingers to do this. There's no tool you could get in there. But then take that curl and just push it onto gently. There's a little bit of area to do that so nothing binds and we got it seated and now what I'm gonna do is put this screw in to hold everything together and start pushing in those connectors and that should be it for the main board a rubber piece had broken off here previously I think this may be barometric pressure or something but just a little bit of glue on the bottom of that and put that back into position I pressed the button on the watch and sure enough it started to boot up uh, the covers not on the back it doesn't need the cover on the back that's just the uh, hot monitor and the charger and I'm going to go through it right quick. Some of the functionality, I'm going straight to like wireless. And I turned it on and I could see that it found my network. So that's good. And a quick check for just button and screen functionality that these things work. And clearly they do. And that's good enough to put these screws in now. So I'm going to drop them back in, tighten down the cover. Do button check again, hit this top button, I see something, hit this bottom button, I see something. So the buttons work, screen works, everything works as far as buttons. Gonna put on the bands now, not out of the woods, but confident enough to put the bands on. So I'm gonna snap on this side and I'm gonna snap on the other side because at this point I'm gonna have to wear the watch. The boss will come over and assist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look, I got a smartwatch, finally. Maybe it'll help. <laughs> Make me smarter? Yes. Hold on. I don't know how to use it. What, what do I do? Is there internet and whatnot? Well, we're going to have to pair it to your phone. The watch will have a trial by fire as it's paired and tested out of the gym at one of our classes. Okay. Okay. What's up? Figuring it right before the gym, now it's in English. <laughs> Check your phone and please set up. Obviously didn't record the class, but this is coming right at the end of the class. We're looking at the watch. No heart this monitor Jen's though. Model, Scorpions. My model. Yeah, mine's bigger. Except your heart monitor works. Mine doesn't. My heart rate monitor works, yeah. You got more steps than me. Yes, I did. I've been wearing it all day. Jen's more awesome than I am. <laughs> I say it passed, but without the heart monitor, it only showed like 200 calories of burn that entire wow. class. Without the heart monitor, you can't get a good, the yeah. stress thing don't work or nothing. Correct. Given the damage I saw, I was really happy to only get this watch to boot up. I never expected to get all the functionality out of it that I did. And going through an exhaustive test, I was able to get everything working except that heart monitor. But I will tell you that the heart monitor is really required for a lot of the measurements for the exercise stuff. So the exercise did not really work very well. I could go and troubleshoot this and swap out the monitor or the main board. I'd really be getting into the weeds and I don't really know what exactly is wrong, which one's wrong. But Based on the original parameters, I'm going to call this project a success, and I'm going to recommend that you don't buy a watch like this if you're going to go swimming in a chlorinated swimming pool. I'm going to end this here. So do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button to be informed about more videos like this when they come out. If another video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching! Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?